Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Aftcast Tenerife Afternoons. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. In today's episode, we're going to have barking dogs, speaking neighbours, and a live show. We're also going to have Christina, who I already recorded for SSDD, same different day. And I got a special interview with a new friend of mine, Simon Sutton George, who's the owner of Tenerife Property Group here in Tenerife. We're going to have the weather afcast for last week and the update on COVID. So I've been trying to do this in one take and I really can't do it. So there might be some cutting and jittery bits, but don't worry about it. I hope this is going to be fine. I was trying to be really professional and I really found out that what really needs to come over is honesty, doesn't it really? So even though this is a podcast, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll actually see me waving. But that doesn't mean you've got to rush over to YouTube because you're not really missing much. You've, I've just got a big furry microphone in front of my face. I might even publish it to Facebook as well. But it is a podcast, so please listen to it on your commute or in the train or on the loo or wherever you are, listen to something like this. So here's the weather afcast for weekend in July the 12th, 2020. It has been a great week. Every day has been pretty similar. We didn't really get the heat that were promised, like 40 degrees, but it was high. It was in the upper 20s in the shade. And uh, if you went out down to the pool or downtown or somewhere else, you probably in the sun way over 30. Uh, don't forget to wear your 50 factor when you come over because if you don't you will burn very very quickly even though there's an onshore breeze and makes you feel cool your first day you're going to be red raw and you're going to regret it for the rest of the holiday we ate every meal outside here and uh, we really enjoyed it don't forget you can come back to these aftercasts next year and find out what the weather was like in each week. So instead of saying, do I need a cardigan at night? Well, what was the weather like in July? And you can come here and just have a look or a listen. So now COVID-19 update. Well, on Tenerife, we've still only got eight active cases, and I think there was only one new one in the past week, but where the one comes from, I don't know, because they've got to get it from somebody else, right? So there must be at least two. So it was probably somebody coming in and going out, and uh, or they just count it as being here, and they were working somewhere else, maybe up in the north. In the south of Tenerife, we really haven't had much. Uh, everybody is really wearing their masks and washing their hands and keeping the distance in the bars it's getting a little bit lax but people are trying to keep distances between tables it's not always successful but i don't think it's meant on purpose obviously the discos aren't open um so you can't dance and stuff and quite a lot of the restaurants in the tourist areas are still closed but a lot of the locals are on the beaches uh, because obviously they're unemployed at the moment so uh, at the moment, I think that we have just been named one of the safest islands or one of the safest places in Europe to be. So we want to stay that way. So don't forget, if you're coming over 14 days before you come, don't do anything silly. Don't go into a high-risk area or do high-risk activities. Wash your hands. Make sure that you're not infected before you come. You don't want to be the guy or girl that brings it back to the island, do you? So next up is Christina, she's uh, telling us a little bit more of her journey towards um, Tenerife. <laughs> she's taking her time because this week she's actually telling you how we moved in together. Quite interesting. Enjoy. So Christina, how are you doing? 
Scheiße, Stevie. <laughs> so last time we heard about you getting your job, when your first job, and uh, I'm sure a lot of things happened before you met me. Yeah, but I don't want to talk about them. Oh, because you were a rock and roller, right? You, you were a Doors fan. You still are a Doors fan, are you? Yeah, sort of, but not so passionate like the old days. <laughs> so what do you want to talk about today? Today it's the second chapter. I want to talk about how we looked for our first flat. I was living in two little rooms in the center of town and then Tim and I decided to get a flat together and we looked and in the end we found a beautiful place. It was how many quadrat meters per? It was nearly a hundred so 90, 98 square meters. Yeah. It was fantastic, and it had a living room with a big stone b a balcony where you had a, where you can see the whole town and the cathedral. That was especially good at New Year's Eve, wasn't it? Yeah, but the bad thing was we wanted to move in, but before we had met, Tim already booked a flight to America, so I was alone. He wasn't there when it was time to move in. And it was in the middle of the Christmas uh, shopping, very busy at work, and then I had to move on my own because Tim wasn't there. And I removed and took the few things that were left in my apartment, got a taxi, and when I came to the flat, something was not working with the heating, so it was freezing cold. I called him, who was in Florida at the moment. He said, it's nice, sunny, and 22 degrees, and it was Minus 15 in Germany. But we were young and I think you can cope. The flat didn't have a kitchen. They told him and he couldn't imagine a flat without a kitchen, but there was basically nothing in the kitchen. No. Maybe we've got to explain to the... Uh the listeners, that in Germany at the time, you had to build your own kitchen when you rented a flat. Not even a sink, was it? So I had to wash the plates in the bathroom. I don't know whether it was so good. I mean, we were in love and everything. But then I thought, oh, at Christmas, I go home to my parents where it's nice and warm and good food on the table. But then Tim came home. I don't know whether I would have been happy today, but then I was. Thank you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Christina, for that wonderful insight. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he came home early to spend Christmas with me, which was really nice. But we still had to see the cold flat. But I kept you warm all Christmas, didn't I? Yeah. And we drank Baileys. And on the first day of Christmas Day, basically, we drove to my parents' house anyway and got a nice meal. That was before I learned to cook, was it? Way before you learn to cook. So that's it for SSDD today. Next week, Christina will tell you a little bit more on her journey towards Tenerife. Thank you, Christina. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Well, 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, Christina loves doing it. And next week she's going to carry on. I don't know what she's planning for next week, but uh, we'll see. So coming up next, we've got an interview with Simon Sutton George. He's the owner of the Tenerife Properties Group. And he's also a YouTuber. So he does also YouTube videos and shows you a little bit around the place for, you know, so you know where you're buying and uh, he looks after you. So he's a good lad. But first, I'd like to thank all our sponsors, and you know who you are. In fact, we, we talk on a daily basis because you're commenting on the videos, and we really enjoy uh, talking to you guys. Uh, even if you don't sponsor, we really did do enjoy talking to you. I try to read every comment. It's getting a bit much at the moment to answer every comment, but I do give a thumbs up or a love, depending on what you've said or where you've been. And uh, for the Christina, she had a birthday last week, and we got thousands of messages especially on the 360 degree video we put out and we couldn't reply to everybody individually on that so I'd like to take this as an opportunity to say thank you to, to you guys as well and if you want to support us financially then there is a way you can go to our website www.timothydowd.com and press the sponsor button every little helps it can be a cup of coffee or it can be a million dollars so when you do come over, uh, don't forget to bring your mask with you and uh, wear it when necessary, but don't wear it unnecessarily. And I know it's a bit of a pain when you don't want that uh, mask tan, do you? So just use a little bit of common sense. I think um, that was lacking in the last few years, I can imagine. But uh, now's the time to start using it again. So without further delay, here is the interview with Simon Sutton George. So Simon, how did you get here and what did you do before you did? Aeroplane. I'm sure everyone answers it that way. I'm sure. <laughs> I used to be a mortgage advisor in the UK. So don't hate me for this, but I used to sell cars. Um, but I got out of the motor trade probably, I'm going to say 2000, probably, and um, I took my uh, license to be a mortgage advisor around that sort of time. And my wife is from here. My wife is from Mikodo Los Vinos in the north of Tenerife. So um, we always knew we'd come here, but we didn't really realise it would be so soon. So come 2008, 2009, with the crisis as it was, I was a mortgage advisor at that time, and um, the banks weren't lending any money and things like this. It was just getting pretty bad. But I thought, well, if they're not lending any money in England, why should they lend any money here? I don't know. But anyway, I spoke to the FSA, Financial Service Authority, as it was back then, and they said, yeah, that's fine. You can come over to Tenerife as long as you go back to the UK once a year to be checked upon by someone from the FSA. So that's what I did. Um, but it really turned out to be that there weren't, although it was only 10 years ago, 11 years ago, there wasn't that much technology to scan your proof of ID, your proof of address and your income and all the rest of it, uh, and then email it to me and the internet wasn't as good as it was, as it is, as it is now. And um, it just, I just wasn't able to give the service to my clients that I used to be able to when I was in the UK. So I ended up knocking that on the head and then opened up an estate agency. Cool, so that was what you did before. So when did you actually arrive here? Uh, well, we arrived in 2009 and I think it was the 30th of March 2009 because my birthday is 31st of March and I think we arrived the day before my birthday. So now you've got plenty of time to save up for his present for next year. There we are. <laughs> okay, so once you got here, did you, you, you were being the, the mortgage advisor here then, were you? Yep. And I'm sat now in a, an estate agent's mm -hmm. in Playa Fania Bay. Playa Fania Bay. And and so when did that happen? Was it like a double thing or did you go from one to the other? No, it was, it was, one, it was one to the other quite smoothly. Um, but unfortunately, because we were in the crisis, it was 2009, 10, when I started doing the, the transfer really between mortgage advice and uh, uh, real estate. Um, I was at that time in 2009 when I arrived, at that time I was renting an office in an estate agency. And 
So I just went in an office. It was, you know, but there were two people in that state HSC plus the boss, and none of them were doing any business because it was the crisis of, you know, 2019, right. whatever. So anyway, so they both left and had to go and find proper jobs. And uh, so, so the owner of the company then said to me, would I like to open my own office with her? So I said, well, yeah, just as well, because as I just said to you just now, the mortgages were, you know, s slowing down a lot because of the crisis, not lending very well. The, the, you know, the, the criteria was just ridiculous. And um, so I said, yeah, okay, we'll open our own office, but not in this office, because that office was down some stairs. It was just in a dingy place. So we opened our own office and then, um, well, she then went back to the UK for various reasons. And so I carried on doing it myself. Well, that was quite a smooth transition then, I think. It was a smooth transition. Um, I didn't need to tell anyone because, of course, it was like, well, I'm not doing any mortgages anymore, and here I am doing a state agency. And in a way, it was seem a bit silly to open up a business in such a poor sort of time, but it mm -hmm. seemed also a good time because you only have either time or money, and I had plenty of time because there were no customers around, so I had time to build up things and work out how it works and things like that. So, yeah, and ten years later, here I am. Okay, so you have your own base, but how do people like find you? I mean, I, I know that we're down a little um, cul-de-sac. Well, yeah, yeah, we're in a little. It is a cul-de-sac, yeah. So how do you how do you how do you market that? Then? Well, my shop window is I don't know what's that three meters by four meters. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. But although it's my shop window, the internet's my shop window. So really, my website. Um, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook, and, and that's really how people get to know about me. But I like to give out information about what to look out for, how to buy a property here, the taxes you have to pay if you're going to sell, things like that. So it's more not, oh, look at me, I'm brilliant, I've sold 10 this month. It's not like that. It's like, this is what you need to do, which hopefully will help you. And if you want to buy something, hopefully you'll come to see me. So that's my shop window, really. So basically you give value on the internet and then people come and look for you when they need some service. That's the plan. Okay. So talking about the plan, it's obviously been working quite well for the past 10 years because you haven't died yet. No, still all right. Uh, but something happened in March this year and it was the Covid crisis. I thought you were going to say my birthday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it connected? We don't know. Tune in next week. <laughs> no, so uh, how did the Covid crisis affect you, well, personally and also the business? So personally, as you well know, we all had to stay inside and it was, I mean, if anyone is listening to this who is in England, mm -hmm. they will laugh at what we had to do living here in Spain. If you step one foot out of the door and you didn't have your paper with you, you were up potentially for a 600 euro fine. Mm -hmm. When I speak with people in England and they were saying like it's 60 euros, but if you pay early, it's uh, pounds rather, and if you pay early, it's 30. It's like, no wonder it runs out, you know. Yeah. But um, no, for me, it was literally two months inside. Uh, Anna, my wife, she was still working. She was, uh, she's a vet nurse, so she was still able to work and needed to work as well, yeah. obviously. Um, but for me, I was inside. How it affected me, business-wise, um, I carried on doing what I normally do, is answering emails, because believe it or not, people were still inquiring about properties. Now, you might think, I mm, don't know, perhaps they were just sitting at home just wondering what to do and, you know, if we survive this coronavirus, maybe I'll buy something. Or perhaps it was just something just to, you know, cheer themselves up, I don't yeah. know. But um, there's still plenty of emails, still plenty of work to do, and uh, yeah, I managed to sort out a lot of things, for example, you know, I had a long list of to-dos before I went into coronavirus, and I've got a shorter list now. Yeah. Cool. And the business itself, did it uh, did it suffer financially at all? Yeah, I mean, of course it has. We haven't sold, uh, what did we sell? We sold two properties throughout the whole COVID, but literally sold and completed on two properties. During the, during during the absolute oh. lockdown quarantine, that was it. Because we were able to sell, okay, during lockdown, but through phase one, two, and three, we were allowed to move around a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, selling and completing during that period. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, that's not going to set the world right, certainly not going to pay all of our wages, but it's obviously helped. And uh, it's certainly not as busy as it should be, because of course, that sort of period of time leading up to March, April, is really the busy, you know, from October the previous year mm -hmm. through till that time, is the busiest time of year. So a lot of the business owners here on the island were given um, incentives not to open. Uh, they were told they don't have to pay the tax straight away and maybe some financial help or something. A lot of the workers on the island actually got money or was promised money and eventually got the money through the Erity scheme. Um, did anything happen with the state agents? Did you, did you get any help from the government? We had to prove 
that we were earning 75% less income than we had done something like the previous month. So because we had properties that had been sold in, I'll say, January or February, they were sold, but they completed in February, March, April, mm -hmm. I was still earning money, in inverted commas. I'm doing air quotes because I'm still earning money, but I'm not actually earning money. I'm only earning, I'm only being paid for stuff I did in January and February. Okay. So, but the government take that as, oh, great, you're still earning money. We don't have to pay you any benefits any sort of help um, they have paid me they've paid me one month worth of 700 euros mm -hmm. and my social security fees are 330 or 340 a month mm -hmm. and they stopped taking that so effectively they've paid me probably a thousand euros in three months. And are they going to have the social, uh, do you have to pay the social security money back? Well I'm hoping not but it doesn't be 300 euros, it's really not the end of the world is it but no. it would be gutting if I had to but you know mm. you'd expect having paid social security for the last 10 years mm. I'd like to think that one 300 euro payment's going to be alright for me maybe, we'll see. They're just half your pension. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, yeah I'll only get one, one euro fifty a month from my pension. Uh -huh. So let's get past the, the bad stuff now. Mm. So, um, what's it like on the island for you personally? So, uh, you say you're married to a Spanish? Mm. Uh, is she Canarian? Tenerife, yeah. Tenerife, no, oh, very good. Yeah. And so, have they got family here? Have you got yeah. like in-laws and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Outlaws live in the north. The outlaws live in the north. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any? Well, let's do it. Let's do it a different way. I've not asked this question before. Do you have any secret um, places that people could go to? So, if somebody's coming here on holiday mm. and they want to have the typical. Uh, Canarian experience. Mm. Uh, is there anything you can suggest somewhere in the south where they could get to with maybe a taxi or, or uh, to eat? Do you mean, or just well, no, to, to, to do something Canarian? It could be eating and drinking. Yeah, I mean that's really what. What else Canarian is? <laughs> is the dancing, I suppose, things yes. like that. You should go to a little village, perhaps see if you can get in a fiesta or something like that. Um, I mean, I live near a village called Arona, mm -hmm. and uh, that's up in the hills. And very often, in fact, some of my clients are actually they speak lovely Spanish and, and they've joined in with all of the pensioners and they've joined the dancing clubs and they go to the casino which isn't a proper casino casino like we would know but um, but yeah maybe you go and do that and then they'll have food um, they have the romerias which is the thing with the, the animals and the tow the carts and things like that and they give free wine and food if you can find one of those if not I I mean I quite like an afternoon at a guachinche or something like that you know a guachinche is is a typical years and years back and what Chinche was a restaurant in inverted commas a room that they would serve food but only be allowed to serve that food while their wine that they were making lasted okay. so if they could sell their wine they could sell food with it once they'd run out of wine that they'd made specifically they were not allowed to serve food so if you can go to a typical wachinche that's worth going to okay and how do i find out where those are there are in fact there is a facebook uh, a facebook page that talks about wachinches but it's not spelt that is spelt i'll tell you g u a c h I N C H E Guanche. This is yeah. So is the Guanche the the people? Yeah, the Guanches. Yeah, I don't know if it's connected, but okay. yes, the Guanches were the Aboriginals. You're right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, okay, that would be good. Mm. Yeah. No, so find one of them. Are they wheelchair friendly? Because my wife's in a wheelchair. A lot are. Really? A lot are. Because, but unfortunately, <laughs> you have to be a bit careful because some of down slopes, because they were the original ones, were underneath the houses. So you'd have the house, and then you'd have the Wachinji underneath, which would have been, I suppose, the garage, maybe, or something. Uh -huh. And then you'd have the vineyard close by. Okay. Cool. Mm. That, that's something I might do, actually. Mm. You'll find some in the north, but have a look on the, just look up Wachinches on the Facebook, uh, on Facebook and you'll see some pages and, and then you'll see they're all, re generally speaking, they're all reasonably priced. Okay. And um, it's just, it's stuff that you've probably eaten, but just served maybe in a different way. Oh. Black, black pudding. You know black pudding? Yeah. So they have it here. Do you know they have it here? I don't know if you know. Yeah, but it's the sweet. They've sweet. got the sweet and the salt. Yeah, so you've got uh, one with almonds and sultanas in it. I mean, I don't like it. I wouldn't oh. eat it. But, but yeah, I mean, it's just nice. It's just different. And then, you know, you've got, I don't know, huevos rotos, which are broken eggs. So that's fried eggs on top of chips. Mm. Big deal. We've all had it before. But it's just a bit of a different experience with a glass of wine. Papas Bravas, or is that more mainland? I think that's a main... I'm not so sure. I'm not... I'm really not so sure. I can't really say. But I think... I always think of that as being like a mainland thing. Okay.
and chiringuitas. There's, there's no chiringuito, yeah, yeah. You there's can have chiringuitos. They're, they're bars, aren't they? Main mostly bars with yeah. tapas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot on the south coast of Spain and in the little villages. That's also. it. Yeah, a little chip. But uh, here I've not I've not sort of seen it because most of the tapas here are like the British type tapas where it's a main meal. Right. And you don't get the little bit, you know, like you do in the back streets of Ibiza or something like. You see, I couldn't think of anywhere, for example, not in Los Cristianos or Las Americas, mm -hmm. where you could go for a typical tapas. No. But there are some nice fish restaurants, obviously, which yeah. you can go to. So you can have the nice papas arrugadas or the wrinkly potatoes. You did a YouTube video on that this week, I believe. Oh, on, on Cine. El Cine opening up. Yeah, that's a really, really nice restaurant. Yeah. Have you been there? I have, yeah. We, we, I took my daughter there last time she was over. She really enjoyed that. That's lovely. Uh -huh. yeah. It looks really cheap until you've eaten everything and then it's the same price as everything else. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So that's a, that's a tip for that. The next thing is, what is uh, what are your plans for the future? What do you think of the future of tourism, let's say, and also the uh, real estate business for, for Tenerife is going to be? Okay, so tourism, I mean, we are always going to have the sun, we're always going to have the beaches, and, you know, COVID-19 aside, I don't think we'll have any real difference. What I think I'd if it were down to me and it's not obviously but if it were down to me it would be nice to sort of say three star upwards all nice hotels things like this and get rid of um some of the complexes that perhaps don't give such a good service you know uh that we're not going to name would well, <laughs> woodworm woodworm in the doors and things like this you know it's just not that nice you know and cockroaches scuttling around and things like that so let's try and bring that up that would be really nice if we could do that um so three star upwards uh, but tourism we're always going to have tourism i think aren't we i mean it's such a lovely place to come so uh, that's that and real estate we are we are i i see some prices and i think good grief how is that ever going to sell but they are selling really? uh, well they were before covid okay. let's say that so so three months ago four months ago whatever um and what's happening with the prices now we don't know because we've literally been on ice or i, I say we've done two maybe other agents have done a couple as well some agents have shut so there's going to be you know What's going to happen with it, with prices? I don't know. I just wonder if we're going to get George and Mildred, who thought they're going to sell in March, we'll put it on the market in March, and then COVID comes along 14th of March, get a lockdown. And then maybe now people are starting to come back. Are they going to say, let's just put it on the market for 50,000 euros less? We want to sell and go back to the UK, wherever they're going. And maybe there are going to be some deals around to be had. Mm -hmm. But whether or not we're going to get a crash like 2009, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. My, that's my idea. No, no, well, it's, uh, everything we say now is our own ideas. You know, we're not attached to the um, the official real estate. No, nothing. <laughs> no, no. So we're not, we're not, we're not doing, uh, what's, what's the word? We're not crashing the market by talking about it. No, we're not. We're not exactly. No. Okay. Uh, what about, um, so the better offer for the tourists, so we want the island to be better now, we, we've, we've had a lot of time to do up all the hotels, Hello. so everything's going to be sort of refurbished and anything, and I've been noticed some of the prices of flights are going, are sort of creeping up. Oh, yeah. um, is that going to be the new normal that your holiday is going to cost you a little bit more but you're going to get a bit of better service be interesting to see how that pans out actually in due in due course because of course we're coming with summer holidays now isn't it for the kids i don't know are we talking about summer holidays now for the kids coming up anyway isn't it right so prices do always go up because i mean we always get people saying oh it's so expensive to come to the summer holidays so are those prices going up simply because it's a summer holiday or is it, oh, we're out of COVID, everyone wants to go on holiday. Now we're going to sort of sting all these people. I don't know. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. I hope it doesn't, I hope it doesn't put too many people coming over by putting the prices up. But if the prices go up, I'd like to see better service. And like I said earlier, we don't want, you know, wood, woodworm in the doors and things like this because we're paying a better price. We want a nicer holiday, you know? I think it's a it's a win win for everybody. Mm. It's a win win for everybody. But you're right. There's been a whole load of refurbs going on the hotels. So obviously the hotels have obviously they've got money in the bank and they've suddenly thought no one's here. We can't upset anyone. Can't upset our customers. They're not here. Let's make it a great experience. And and that would be the nice thing that you know when H10, which would be interesting. I'm picking a client up from H10 tomorrow, and they've done a lot of work because I I did a, a video pass there, um, and they had everyone outside in the garden doing stuff around the pool. So that'd be interesting to see what their stays like. And of course. H10 Costa Deque Palace was where we got our first 
cases, the Italian Oh, Oh, the, the La Caletta oh, there. The well, funny you should say that, the hotel next door, the Sheraton La Caletta, yeah. that's the hotel that we used to use when we came on vacation. Right. So when we first came over, we used the Sheraton La Caletta and the H10 was, was the other option, mm. but we went with that one. So yeah, when, it, when the COVID-19 started in that hotel, it was mm. quite it was quite interesting mm. the way that they reacted so quickly and decisively, I think. I think so. And that's why we're one of the safest places on earth at the moment. I think so as well. But and I, of course, well, I, and, I, and I really should say, and I've said it loads of times on the internet as well, on my Facebook and so on, the H10 really handled that really, really well. There were a lot of people in there that said, oh, we're in lockdown and we can't do this. Well, hang on a minute. Do you want to take this COVID-19 back to your grandmother and, and potentially kill her? Or do you want your two-week holiday? All right, I know you saved up for it for a year. And I know you were enjoying yourself and three days in, you're on lockdown. But it's just the way it was. Yeah, being locked down in a five-star hotel. Well, it could be worse, <laughs> couldn't it? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you don't want to be the guy, if you are coming over, this is just from, from me personally, if you are coming over, then 14 days before you fly, please don't go to a high-risk area because you don't want to be the Italian tourist that brought COVID-19 back to Tenerife. Totally agree. Okay. So we're coming near to the end now. I usually ask you what your future is, but I'm assuming your future is going to be same, same old, same old? Same old, same old, yeah. Okay. I'm staying here for the long term, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you, I mean, I found you on YouTube, so I know you have a YouTube channel, and you don't only do like selling internet, but you give a lot of information out on that as well. Correct, yeah. So is that something that you're going to carry on doing or increase doing? or Carry on doing that, carry on doing what I'm doing. Um, so the, my YouTube YouTube channel you can easily find it Tenerife Property Group um, Simon Sutton George search for that you'll find me uh, on Facebook and also on uh, on YouTube as well I'll put all the links in the in the description and in the comments thanks um, so yeah just more of the more of the same really the thing I really dislike is when someone says oh look at us we're so brilliant I've sold 10 admittedly I put my properties on YouTube because that's the place I store my videos for my website but there is so much more to that channel that you can get information about how to buy do I need a lawyer? Do I, you know, how do I send my money over? Lots and lots of things. It's not just all about sell, sell, sell. It's about help, help, help as well. Okay. And is there something? Is there something they could sign up to, so like a newsletter or a? I do get a newsletter. I send a newsletter out at least once a month, uh, if not twice. At the moment, I'm only actually sending a newsletter out generally once a month, but just with links to the videos I've done because properties coming on the market are so few and far between, or have been anyway, mm -hmm. starting to pick up a bit now though. And if I wanted to sell my property and I'm on Tenerife, I just call you up and... Absolutely fine, I'd be happy to help you, thank you. And uh, if anybody's looking to buy and they can't get over just yet, how can you help them with that? Well, I do videos uh, of all of the properties that I sell, but obviously if someone wanted to look at a property inside that they couldn't come over and actually see, I'd be happy to do a video for them there as well. Okay, so so don't forget if you're interested in either selling or buying then get in touch and uh, all the links are going to be in the description below so the last thing I'm going to ask you is do you want to say hello to anybody I'd like to say hello to my mum and my brother I'm going to call them I do a video call once a week with them uh, on WhatsApp mum's feeling very very down she's in she's in lockdown and she can't get out but um, I'd like to say hello to my mum my brother say hi to my dad as well anyone else that knows me in England okay or Wales. My aunt, my aunt lives in Wales. Don't forget the Welsh. <laughs> You're from Wales. Don't forget the Welsh. My mother was Welsh. <laughs> Simon, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm going to bundle this up and people will hear this on Sunday the 12th of yeah. July uh, in the night because I usually do it during the day and then I publish it ready for Monday morning for your commute to work. Well, just a little bit of sun. So this is Tim Dowd for Living with MS in Tenerife and Simon Sutton George in Playa Fania Bay. Correct. Is it Playa or Playa? Playa. It should be Playa because it's always a uh, uh, Manzana Playa. 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 Mm. I always get it wrong. I always get it wrong. But it's Playa Fania Bay and it's like San Francisco Bay. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> playa Fania Bay. Signing off. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Vamos a la Playa. Well, I hope you like that. And it was really, really good. I mean, I enjoyed talking to the guy. We're going to meet again soon, I hope. And uh, if you want any more information, then don't forget to go to the links in the description. And uh, you can 
contact in there. You can also contact me at www.timothydowd.com. Go to the contact page and send me an email. I answer to emails a lot better than I do to Messenger or FaceTime videos because I'm usually either looking after Christina or sat on the loo. So the best thing you can do is send me an email and then I can answer them in quiet. What else? Oh yeah, we've got a Facebook page, Living With MS in Tenerife. So if you search for at LWMST, like the page there, then we do put a few pictures up there as well. And Instagram, we photograph all our food. I mean, if you're, so if you're a foodie, then nip over to Instagram. But if you're not on Instagram, don't worry, we do distribute it automatically to uh, Facebook and to Twitter. So even though I'm not active on Twitter, if you're a Twitterer, then you can uh, follow us on Twitter and we post the links to the to the foodie stuff. Uh, I might even start sending links to the videos as well. Yeah, I'll do that. So if you're our Twitterer, then I'll send links to the videos as well. So like and share all that. Um, we did make, make the thousand um, subscribers on YouTube. In fact, we're over 1,500. We're over 1,500 subscribers on Facebook. But that's enough, actually. I mean, if you get more, then there's, there's not really a, a lot of personal stuff you can do you know you, you, there's, there's too many I don't say it's too many but you know too many to be personal and uh, we like we like being personal to you guys so if you come over hit us up and if we're in your area we'll swing by and say hello or we can do a little magic show if you want. Uh, this podcast has been brought to you by Franciscana Dunkless Beer it hasn't actually but I'm just hoping that they're listening and <laughs> they'll sponsor it Mm. Kirsten, not alcohol free, okay? One of my good friends here in Kayasavachi. Okay, so that's about it. I'd like to thank you for listening. Please like and share. Don't forget, next week, Sunday night, we'll have a podcast. And also, we try to do YouTube videos every Thursday. And I've been doing some drive arounds as well. So if you're interested in looking around the island from the car's point of view, I've been doing that on YouTube and Facebook. So this is Tim for Living With MS in Tenerife and Afcast Tenerife Afternoons Podcast. Signing off. Good night.